and welcome to another episode of the Football History Boys on YouTube. Now today we're going to be watching one of football's most famous matches, the 1967 European Cup Final between Celtic and Inter Milan. Now first things first, Inter Milan were considered to be favourites for this tie. They had won the 1964 and 1965 European Cups, playing a style of football called Catenaccio. Now in English that means the chain, because of after scoring an early goal, the Inter Milan side would often defend deep then and hold on to that lead and often win 1-0, uh, playing quite a negative style of football. Against them was Celtic. Celtic were quite the opposite to Inter Milan. They had favoured attractive attacking football under the management of Jock Steen. They had a side which had all grown up within 30 miles of Celtic Stadium at Parkhead. And they really were a side which knew what this game meant to the public in Glasgow. It was a huge game. It had a lot of press uh, build up before it. Heavily weighted onto the tactics of the two sides. The British press had called Inter Milan's style uh, paranoid, negative and brutal. And it's called Celtic heroes even before the game started. So the game is built up massively. Let's see if it was worth it. Lisbon. Celtic versus Inter Milan in the final of the European Cup. If any British team could win this coveted trophy, it had to be Celtic. First things first, the commentator there mentions if any British side could win the trophy. Now, in 1967, no British team had won the European Cup. It had been won in Spain, Portugal and Italy, but not in England, Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. So it was a big big game here not just for Scotland and Celtic but also for British football fans who are heavily in favour of this Celtic side winning to bring the cup to Britain. Inter Milan kicked off and in a continental near heat wave maybe the odds were a shade against Celtic and yeah, had lot the Scottish heroes there. and their 15,000 supporters cared about that. Attack is the policy that's won the Glasgow Idols everything this year. There you go attack is the policy which has won the Glasgow Idols everything this year. Now, that was very true. They'd won the Scottish League. They'd won the Scottish Cup. They'd won the Scottish League Cup that season. And we're going for an unprecedented quadruple, which I don't think had been seen before this. So this Celtic side had won the favour of a lot of football fans, a lot of the neutrals, because of how they played. Attacking football, beautiful football, and they'd actually won with it as well. So it was great to see... Um, but could they get past this Inter Milan side? With the English Cup, for which they weren't qualified to compete. <laughs> An early Inter Milan attack found Simpson on the alert. That's quite common, seeing Inter Milan attacking very early on. Now, as I said before, Catanaccio, the chain, required an early goal to set it in motion. They needed to take the lead for them to then go defensive. So it's no surprise to see Inter Milan at the start of the game really attacking. Celtic nice counter-attack coming within an ace of taking the lead. Not safe. Inter Milan looked really dangerous here. Capellini was brought down by Craig. Oh, a penalty. Uh -oh. With the spot kick, yes, Mazzola made no mistake. So there we go, Inter Milan won the lap. This is going to suit them massively. They've got that early lead. They can defend it now. They can deploy Catanaccio and really frustrate the Celtic side. What I've noticed about a lot of these penalties, especially this game and the last game, they're, they're often rolled in very slowly to, to either side of the goalkeeper. Um, the player who scored there, Mazzola, He's well known as well because his father, um, Valentino Mazzola, had played for the Grande Torino side of the 1940s, a side which, after the Second World War, had really propelled Italian football back into the positive uh, limelight. They they'd managed to propel Italy into a more positive limelight after the, after the Second World War. Now, unfortunately, that Torino side died in a, in a plane crash after flying back from Lisbon, um, a friend in Lisbon, um, they crashed into the Superga Basilica in Turin uh, and unfortunately all died at the peak of their powers so Matsola scoring there showing the legacy of his father still there scoring in massive games 
This was where Celtic showed the all-round attacking greatness that made them invincible this season on every big occasion. Second half. Celtic still a goal down in spite of having had 90% of the game so far. So there we go. Not surprising. Celtic have had 90% of the game so far. Now, of course, Inter Milan started the game strongly. They scored in the first 10 minutes. But now they've sat back. They think, we'll just defend this lead now. So it's no surprise to see that Celtic have had most of the game and are attacking and attacking and attacking. And what you'll see now in the second half is that onslaught will begin from Celtic. They'll just push and push and push to try and break down this rigid, incredible, actually, Italian defence. They continued piling on the pressure, believing the reward must come before long. Bouncing out of the box. The Italians had the luck of old Harry this time. Oh my gosh, what a save. Oh wow, just off the line. Fullback Tommy Gemmell shot from 25 yards out. Great goal. Often you'll see that even now when teams play anti football, uh, it often requires a piece of brilliance to try, you know, to, to break through. And here they've got a, a long range strike which has just flown into the top corner. So often you'll see that even now. The only way to get through a team that's part of the bus is to score an absolute worldie, and that's what he's done. Gemmell's brilliant goal didn't put new heart into Celtic. The old one was good enough to beat anybody. <laughs> and how their supporters thank their stars they'd come to Lisbon. But somehow, Inter's defence held firm. Oh, <laughs> well, keep us having a great game to be fair. Barely seven minutes from time came the winning goal. Chalmers deflected Murdoch's shot past Sati. Good goal. 2 uh, one Can I hold on? Got to find the kill down the pitch. Brilliant. Pitch invasion. They came quite common after this, to be fair. Up the counts. Love that. Billy McNeil and his magnificent men earned the thanks and admiration of their native Glasgow, Scotland and the whole United Kingdom. So there we go. They had got the admiration of Glasgow, of Scotland and of the whole of the United Kingdom. As I said before, there had been no British side to have won the European Cup before this. And so it was really praised and celebrated in the whole of Britain and not just in Scotland. Um, we tend to think of it these days, the European Cup, as in terms of British terms, has been dominated by Liverpool, Manchester United, uh, Chelsea and so on. But what we shouldn't forget is that the first team to win the European Cup, from a British perspective, was Celtic, a Scottish side. And they'd won it playing beautiful, attractive football against the uh, Inter Milan side who most thought were unbeatable, most thought couldn't lose this game. Um we see that attractive style of football develop in other countries after this. You have the total football of Ajax and Holland in the late 60s, early 70s. You have Man United winning the European Cup the following year, beating Benfica 4-1 in the final. Now, this Celtic side had, as I said before, grown up within 30 miles of Parkhead. They were a side who had grown up in some of the poorest areas of the city. They had grown up in impoverishment and with illness, even the winner of uh, even the goal scorer at the end, Stevie Chalmers, had survived tuberculosis meningitis in 1955, an illness which most thought was was almost always fatal. So the fact they'd overcome all these hurdles showed that this was an incredible side which knew what this meant to their city. This was a win as much for Glasgow as it was for Celtic. So, an incredible, incredible game. Um, really enjoyed watching that. Uh, looking forward to your suggestions for what we could watch next. The link to the original video will be on in the description. Uh, that was from British Pathé. Again, a beautiful video, really nice quality. Uh, you can actually read about the 1967 Lisbon Lions in our book. 
um, football's 50 most important moments, which is here. Um, you can get that in all your good bookstores or you can get it on Amazon as well. Um, so if you want to read a bit more about that game, you can read about it there. Um, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to next time. Until then.